Hi, welcome to Don's Manny Factory. Well, you might have guessed, I'm uh, hung up on the leaf springs waiting for parts on Betsy. I'm heeding Wally's suggestion to uh, just step away from it for a while. I am still not well, but I'm well enough to sit down here and dink with electronics. So what I am doing is building a 5F2A guitar amp or a Princeton uh, known as uh, a friend of mine started this and kind of got in over his head and I don't blame him uh, there's some discrepancies in this kit he bought this kit to put together and uh, with all the parts and everything just hold on a second there, Don. You have been tinkering on the car. You know you have. Anyway, uh, I'm going to include some shots in this video of stuff I did before I got sick and even a little bit after I got sick because I can't help myself, I guess. Anyway, so uh, now we get to go back and forth between electronics and Betsy. I welded the head to the shaft there so that they won't turn and I'm just going to put these slugs in here to take up the largest amount of the shims that are needed so then I don't need a whole stack of shims I only, I only need one or two shims front and back and then that'll uh, get it aligned anyway so obviously I'm going back to the OEM control arms got it put together with the uh reworked OEM arms everything seemed to turn out pretty good I got it set at about oh it's approximately three degrees of uh, caster and about a tenth of a degree positive camber uh, that's pretty good for the right side but it all went together really good well I know it doesn't look like much here but making some progress see yeah, I've got the heaters soldered up and i'm using twisted pair here yeah i know it's not green but uh this is what i had so uh it makes really good the heater wire you know routed down here close to the chassis and and i can tape that into place or use a dab of silicone on it okay you'll notice that i have the sheath uh, part of the cable, the choke cable, way extended here. Now the whole point of that is that when you pull the choke on, it can only go just so much and then it can't choke any further. Okay, so that's the first thing I do. And the second thing that I do is something I'll have to show you later with some spare uh, choke parts because I'm not going to take my carburetor part to show you what I did. But basically uh, the spring-loaded choke plate here, I unwound that spring by half a turn. And I'll show you how to do that. With the spring unwound half a turn, the mass of the air coming through the carburetor will unload the choke. So the point there is that wherever you set the choke for, when you give it some throttle, it'll unload the choke a little bit and the car won't stumble and run too rich. And it gives it, for any choke setting, it gives it a way broader range of throttle settings that it will run at uh, without loading up the motor. So you don't have to run too lean, stumble, in order to get it to run with throttle. You can just set the choke and it will drive. And you can just slowly inch off the choke and it just keeps running normally without loading up. Okay, so how do I do this in facto? Well... Basically, uh, I'll show you. The car is uh, its stone cold right now. Um, I'll, sh I'll show you how I do it. You can do it when it's cold, like it is right now. But what I do is I, I loosen this. I wanted to reset this anyway, so we're going to go through the motions here. I loosen this up so that... Uh, it's I can open and close the choke without the cable bothering me and what I want to do 
is start the motor up. If the motor is hot, okay, so I'm just going to pull this back a little bit. So what I do is, with it idling at the proper speed and everything's all set and adjusted, the idle mixture and everything, then I set it so that this fast idle cam is just barely off. I don't want this screw here on the fast idle cam holding the throttle open. Uh, I want this screw over here controlling the idle. So I adjust that so that I pretty much I get maximum fast idle. Okay, so uh, then with a hot motor, I just start closing the choke and it'll run faster and faster and faster as the throttle opens, but eventually the motor will be too rich and it'll start to slow down. And what I do is I set that as it gets faster and faster and faster, then I set it till it slows down about 50 RPM. At that point, when I've reached that point, then I take the, uh, I don't know what to call that, anyway, the cable casing. I just push it through, well, I don't want the choke to move, I push it through, I gotta open this screw up a little bit more, so that it holds the choke in that position so you can't pull it past that 50 rpm drop okay at that point i then tighten this screw and i can then pull the cable out and open the choke all the way and i push the cable back just a little bit so I can put a little opening pressure on the choke. And then that locks it in the open position. And when I go to pull the choke in the morning, all I do is grab it, open it as far as it'll go till it hits the stop. And I know the choke is exactly perfect for a cold motor. Start it up, it starts right up and idles on fast idle. Doesn't over, you know, doesn't get run too rich, doesn't run too lean. And then as it starts to warm up, I can just slowly start inching this off and driving it the whole time the throttle will unload because of the air, the massive air coming in. And eventually the choke is off. Next progress report. Cleaned up these wires, did them as twisted pairs because they're AC, as is the heater circuit. And... Cleaned up and rewired the transformer and the tubes and the speaker out jack. And then over here, I got the input jacks wired. And so the way I did it was rather than just have them parallel, uh, we've got a low gain input and a high gain input. And then the volume and tones have their uh, all their connections and the caps for the tone controls and everything. And a ground bus that runs over to the main ground central point for ground. So that's uh, that's it so far. Here's one of my tune-up tricks. Yeah, I'm running five inches of vacuum from the vacuum regulator there that I have set up for my vacuum advance. The whole purpose, it's actually supposed to be around eight. And the reason I say that is because let me uh, get this unplugged back here. Come on. Well, I'm just being a fumble fingers here. Okay, there we go. Now, as you can see, the vacuum is bouncing right around 10 or 11 inches. See? Now, what I don't want to have 
is have manifold vacuum at my vacuum advance causing the timing to go up and down. That makes all of the variations of idle speed even worse because the cam is slightly radical or it's enough that it's causing that variation. You know, a stock cam would be idling up here, you know, 18 inches. But uh, this one here, because of the lack of vacuum at idle, I use the regulator to st stabilize the vacuum. Okay, does that make sense? So that way, see I get five inches of vacuum, but it's very stable. So it pulls the vacuum in advance on just enough. I have eight degrees of timing here at initial timing, but with five inches of vacuum on the vacuum advance, it goes up to about 18. So that way, I have a smooth idle. I don't, it doesn't require as much throttle to make the motor idle, even with the radical cam. And when I turn off the key, it's actually, uh, there's, the cr throttle is close enough that I don't get any run on after the key goes off. And as soon as I crack the throttle, it works normally. It just pulls up with the throttle with a time start, uh, part spark port. And how I do that, speed up. So how I do that is I have this vacuum regulator over here, right here. Um, let's see, I, could, I could probably yank that out of there so I can show you better. Have it routed underneath here. Okay, it's just the standard re vacuum regulator. I had to take it apart and change the spring to give me exactly how much vacuum I'd wanted. Normally it's a little more than five. So what I have is I have my time spark port going to the vent and then manifold vacuum is going to the source that's being regulated. So the output here that's going to the distributor is regulated at five inches until the vent has vacuum put to it and then it just follows the vacuum time port, the timed vacuum port as it were. Now I normally have this at eight degree eight inches of vacuum. But it has changed for some reason. So that's why my idle slowed down. I had my idle set around 900. But uh, this little vacuum regulator changed from 8 degrees to 5. So that's why my idle changed. That's why I'm here today looking at it. So the timing is right at 8 degrees. Degrees of 
timing with uh, eight initial and the rest is mechanical. So then my next check is put the vacuum on, run it up to cruise speed. So at cruising RPM, I'm running 43. And that gives me my gas mileage. So I get both performance and gas mileage that way. Well, now I realize you guys didn't get to hear half of what I said, or if you heard any of it. But, uh, so my conclusion after that little test is that uh, the timing is okay, except that um, this vacuum regulator has changed from 8 degree, eight inches of vacuum down to 5, and so I've lost some of my idling timing. And so the idle slowed down, which is what I was noticing yesterday when I was driving. So I have to take a look at this, and we'll find out whether it's, uh, you know, the diaphragm has a problem or, you know, who knows why it's uh, acting up a bit. So I've got the uh, circuit board mounted on some little short standoffs. Now all I have to do is get all of these uh, wires here for the ins and outs on the 12AX7 and the main power and the ground and everything to the board. And of course the one wire coming from the uh, volume and tone circuit. Okay, let's turn it on again. Let's take it up to 100 volts. Yeah, see that says 345, but pin, see it says 316, 315. So if I take it up the rest of the way, see it's 374, that's too much. Three twelve. See, that's just about what it has to be. Okay, let's plug this in. And let's turn it on. Turn up some volumes here. the good news it uh, fired up no smoke came out this little lamp looks pretty good it's all finished so there you go Merry Christmas Tom and Mr. Nate